There we go. One of the best strikers in the world. One of the most feared Muay Thai practitioners on, on the planet. Former One Championship flyweight champion, Jonathan Haggerty. How are, how are things today with you, sir? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Not too bad. Lovely day down here. Sun's shining. Can't complain. Can't about yourself? I'm superb, mate. And as I said off camera, all, all the better for speaking to you today. Me too, mate. It's a pleasure. Superb. Well, let's just talk a little bit. And first and foremost, I want to get something off my chest. I've seen a little bit of um, pictures between you and the prospect, Nathaniel Woods. How, what's training, okay. what's training been like with him? Because that's that's two worlds colliding, MMA and Muay Thai. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm just uh, posting it up, getting people like just uh, <laughs> getting people a little bit excited, you know. But um, yeah, now we've um, I, we just basically crossed paths when he's training with Christian Knowles, and um, we do a little bit of work down at Knowles Academy. Uh, nothing too serious, but when I am ready to. Um, change over to MMA, I will be obviously doing full-time work with him. He's a great, uh, like his name, prospect, you know? It's amazing. I mean, there is, there is going to come a point though, John, if he's fighting for a world title and his nickname's still the prospect, I don't really know. We might have to change that at some point. Yeah, yeah, 100%, 100%. Something the man, we have to call him the man. The man, yeah. Well, the champion. <laughs> the champ. Something about it. You just mentioned then, I wanted to pick up on, is the, is the plan long-term to transition to MMA? Uh, yeah, it's always, it's, always been, um, it's always been the plan, you know, even from a kid, like sitting there on the set when I was at a young age, watching Anderson Silver in the cage, you know, waiting up late nights, watching UFC. UFC, like, I can't complain, one, one championship is one of the biggest uh, platforms in the world. But when it comes to MMA, you know, it's, I think UFC is where it's at, yeah. and, um, yeah, that's my main goal, you know. One, one championship is brilliant, mate, because I like how it um, combines different disciplines. There'll be a kickboxing match, there'll be a Thai match, there'll be MMA. Yeah. I think it's doing great things for this, for all combat sports, to be honest. I agree, mate. Let's talk a little bit about it. So you were meant to fight in April uh, against Elias Mahmoudi. That obviously fell yeah. through. Was that a visa issue, as I understand it? Uh, with that, I think it's with a... With a um, UK was uh, on the... on the. I think it was... a. Uh, What's what they call it? The red list or yeah. something to fly in Singapore. We wasn't allowed to fly in, but um, yeah, that was uh, that was heartbreaking for me, man. How difficult was that? Let, let's let's have it out. How difficult was that getting that fight? You know, uh, I trained fourteen weeks for that camp because um, I knew this guy was. He we was meant to fight in the past a few times. Our names have always been mentioned. Same with Savas, Michael Savas. But with this Ilias Mamoudi, I thought he's a very di difficult fighter, and I thought to myself, if I beat him in a good uh, good way. I think I'll be next in line for the title. So I was training. I was got not like I graft my bollocks off all yeah. the time training. You know, I never take like shortcuts. But with this one, it was like fourteen weeks, like bang on, and um, I had a good game plan for him. And then like three days before I went to fly, they sort of uh, contacted and said, "Yeah, let's postpone it." And um, he he ended up flying flying out there to carry on fighting, and he fought a tired knee. Yeah. What did you make of that performance? Then, I think was that a majority decision loss? I think. Uh, I'm not, I can't really remember. I remember watching it though, but I do think he got he got beat. He, um, his face weren't really too good, but the tire just played it nice and simple. Just grabbed him around the waist and uh, pinched him up. Really. I asked Liam this question, Liam Addison, when I spoke to him a couple of months ago, and as I mentioned then off camera, I see Liam every couple of weeks. But as yeah. a as a ta Muay Thai fighter from England, do you like fighting yeah. ties? But do we like fighting? Do I like fighting Thai? Do you like to fight a, a, a Thai in your discipline in, in Muay Thai? Yeah, you know, I've, I've always I've always said it like the I've not had much experience, but mm. the, the experience that I've had is against top caliber fighters. Do you know what I mean? And um, I always say to myself, I prefer to fight a Thai, you know, because I, I I've got a sort of Thai style myself. Yeah. And um, I like a technical fight, like you know, like, with like Ilyas Mamoudi, for instance, he's more like a. The K1 striking, like, it comes forward, he's aggressive. It's awkward style. Yeah. And you have to sort of adapt to that. But with the tyres, I've been doing it for years. And, uh, yeah, I prefer to fight tyres. Yeah, because... Yeah, apart, apart from Rod Sang. <laughs> well, we'll get on to Rod Sang. Don't worry about that. But it's funny, John, because as, as an Englishman, you do fight like a Thai fighter. And I don't mean that yeah, you know, disrespectfully. Like, all yeah, yeah, you fight course. Muay Thai, you fight in a Thai style. But you... If, if, if I was watching a silhouette of Jonathan Haggerty, I, I might presume... Haircut notwithstanding, he's a he's a yeah, he's, he's <laughs> yeah. in Thailand, yeah, yeah, and 100%. I do like, like I said, I do prefer to fight tires because the way I fight as well. 
Out of interest, I know you can't tell me specifics, but has, has there been any rumblings from one championship? Has any news about a potential fight? Um, there's not been any 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 news in the pipeline, mate. Uh, I'm just waiting for now. I think uh, I might get the vaccine and maybe it might speed things up a bit. I'm not sure. But I'm, I'm itching, mate. I'm itching to get out there. I'm ready. All I need is another four weeks training camp because I'm basically ready now as we speak. But another four weeks and I'll be good to go, mate. Well, there's four of you, I think, who had fights cancelled from Brits. There was yourself, Liam, Amber Kitchen and Jacob Smith, who I've spoken yeah, to. That's, 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 yeah, I spoke that's to all correct. four of you and you all say how, how difficult it was getting them fights cancelled last minute. Yeah, they sort of held me on. They had, they let me they let me hang on to like the last because uh, they put me on like when did they put me on last? So yeah. all the UK fighters were fighting, and then I was on last, and then they all got their fights cancelled. And I was thinking in my head when I was training, are they going to cancel mine? Surely they can't. They'll just tell me that. But it was letting me hold on, and then yeah, they give me the, the devastating news, mate. Out of interest, I know Jacob is fighting on Yoho. I think Liam is planning to fight there as well. Have, have you thought about fighting on, on a Yoho show in the meantime or something like that? Yeah, you know, I've, I've, I've always said it. I'd love to. I'd love to. Um, obviously, I've got to get the green light first. And um, the main thing is hopefully I get a fight on one. And um, yeah, we can always resort to that. But we just obviously need the confirmation and, uh, you know, the, go, the, the green light. But I'd love to fight back on the home show. I'd love it. The show that I, you wonder came what, up on. I wonder what the crowd would be like now going back onto the home show do you know what I mean I think it'd be electric mate to be honest be the whole yeah I think so as well. I think so yeah that is obviously something on, 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 the, on, the, on the cards that excites me <laughs> well let's talk about it John I've got to because your two fights with Rod Tangit Mungnon are two of my favourites I think the two of everybody's favourites Thank you very much. Thank not, you. A, not a problem, my friend. The, the pleasure is mine watching them. And I think ultimately, with him as the champion, I presume you want your you want to work your way back to, to the third fight with him. Is that correct? Yes, one, one million percent. We've obviously, uh, I would say I'm finished business, but he has, he did basically seal the deal with that, the second fight. But the first fight, it's unfinished business, the first fight. So <laughs> one, one in my eyes. Do you feel like you were you you got you done enough to get the, the victory in the first fight? Um, watching it back, I thought, yeah, you know what? To be honest, I did. I I, I honestly did, and then um, I think it was a on the cards. It was a draw, and um, they went down to the like obviously the, the criteria of damage. But yeah, I think I won round one, round two, and round five, and obviously one they score it each round by round. Yeah, but it is what it is. We uh. It's made me a stronger fighter, mate, if you ask me. <laughs> You've now spent eight rounds in there with, with the, the champion. Obviously, yeah. you can't tell me specifics in case by some miracle Rod Tang will end up watching this, but, but what have you learned from them two fights? Is, is, there, a, is there something you feel like you can you could exploit in a third fight? Yeah, so the, the, the second fight, um, it was just that it was, it was horrendous, you know, really. I was just fell into a war, mate. I told myself, mm. don't war. But see, with me, I like, like you get hit, and when he's there doing all this stuff and that, you just yeah, you can't help yourself. But I have um, I have fought him twice, and um, I felt his power, and I know exactly what to do for the next round three, one million percent, and I will stick to it. <laughs> I will stick to it. Is, is that the but, yeah, problem? But, you feel you got you got dragged into a into his game plan, if you like. Yeah, yeah, because I was, I remember myself, like, in me, psychologically, I remember in my head, like, I'm fighting, and I'm thinking, I need to back off, back off, and, sh like, point score, point score. And as I'm doing that in the ring, in my head, I'm thinking, everyone's going to think I'm running away. Mm. So I just thought, fuck this, I'm, language, sorry, I'm going to meet Nothing. fire with fire, which, was, which wasn't a, a really good idea, but, like I said, we move, and we, um, hopefully we get, we get the chance again. That's why we need good judges, though, isn't it? Because sometimes a fighter who is pressured and forward, who's not landing anything, versus a fighter who's backing yeah. off and countering, sometimes just yeah, she gets to gets the nod, doesn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. I think uh, they go with aggression on one, don't they? Aggression, sort of damage, all that sort of um stuff. So I've got to just uh, break him apart next time. <laughs> Do you have a route back of the title? Is there someone you think you you need to fight? You're obviously number two in this division. Is there is there a what would you call it? A, a roadmap, if you like. Yeah, so another la like ladder to get up. Uh, um, so there's someone on top of me. I think Pampayak's on top. Yeah. Or Superlex. Superlex on top. Pampayak's below. Superlex on top. I think 
if I train to fight Superlick, I should fight the one Pampayak. Is Pampayak below me? Yeah, Pampayak's three. And then the winner of them, like, should uh, just have it on. But who am I? I'm not the matchmaker. <laughs> but I'm easy, mate. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I'll, I'll fight anyone, you know? Out of interest, it's probably a bit of a cliche question, but how does a young man from South London end up as the one, the one, the first ever English one championship champion? It was, uh, mate, it started off as a dream, mate, to be honest. Uh, I've even got the messages on my phone. I remember, like, what was it? Like four, four years ago, three years ago, I messaged one championship saying, great show. I'd love to be a part of it one day. And then um, I remember training with Christian Knowles. I had a private session with him and he just went to me automatically. Like, one of, like, contacted me, like the scout for one, saying um, they want they want to they want to sign you. And I thought, no, no, no way. And then all of a sudden, I see your contract. I signed it, as you do. And then um, had the first fight with Laziri, obviously. That put, uh, I think that downward elbow put me on the map, really. Downward elbow. I think elbow. that helped a lot. Downward elbow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that helped a lot. And then um, after that fight, I remember sitting in my car and uh, Chris rang me again saying they've give you, they've give you the Sam A fight for the world title. And I was just like, no, nah. I didn't believe him. And then he carried on saying, no, honestly, John, they've given it to you. And then, yeah, that's it, mate. The, the rest is history. Crazy, mate. That, that Sam A performance was just masterful. And, and I'm not saying that because we're on. That's something that I would say, yeah. say something different off camera. It really was just, you know, thank you very much. Masterful performance. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate that, mate. If you see closely, I've still got a, uh, a bent nose from him. <laughs> so, Sam A, if you're watching, I'm going to get you back. <laughs> what was that? It's been an elbow. No, nah, that was, uh, I think it was round two when he just, I got a picture as well. He just went wallop and I just felt my nose just go like, snap. <laughs> I, do you know what? I, as, as just you couldn't remember, breathe after that. Crazy, mate. Crazy. This is what, something I wanted to ask you is obviously you're one of the, the big, oh. Sorry, mate. I've got a phone call. Sorry. No, no worries, mate. It happens. Where's this happens? Sorry, mate. <laughs> Obviously, you're one of the big, the big Muay Thai stars in England now. Probably, you, I would say yourself and, and Liam are the two big names at this point. How? Yeah, thank you. I obviously covered a lot of MMA, and I'll get a lot of casual fans to MMA get, say it's it's boring when it, when it goes to the ground, isn't it? And my response yeah, is, again, sorry, sorry, yeah, get... the, the door's knocking and everything's going a bit wild. Oh, now. Sorry, mate. No worries, my say friend. Again, sorry. So I will get casual fans of MMA say. It's a, it's, I love MMA, but it's boring when it goes to the ground. And my catchphrase yeah. response is always, watch Muay Thai. Yeah, how, yeah. How do I, you get um, Muay Thai more popular, John? How do we get more Thai? Um, you know, like when with one, they sort of brought uh, Thai boxing into their into their um, their organisation. I think it's very exciting, Thai boxing. But like that question you asked, how do we get it recognised more? You know, I think one right now is leading the way. Yeah. And... Um, I think, mate, your answer is probably as good as mine. I have no idea. I was just, <laughs> just saying, uh, mate. just like I think, what what the Thai boxers are doing now, I think fighting in the MMA gloves is a big game changer, and it's very exciting. Yeah. I think that's a part of um, what we need to keep doing. Shows need to start doing Thai boxing with four ounce gloves. I think that might be a start. And um, yeah, man, just hopefully it gets bigger and bigger. Just more, just more killers in gyms. All around the yes, country. Yes, just keep breeding. Just keep breeding them. Let's talk about a young killer I wanted to mention, which is your young, your your younger brother Freddie. First yep. and foremost, how how proud are you of him? Of him maybe following in your footsteps and and having his amateur fights right now? Yeah, I'm um I'm very I'm very proud of him. Like everything he does, like I I say he probably will be better than me because obviously he's grown up and had me to look up to. With me, I had really not an older brother to look up to, so um. He will be uh he will be the next the next star. And um yeah, very proud of him what he's doing, like staying on the straight and narrow. And I think finish school now. So um he knows what he's gotta do, he knows where he wants to be, and um I'm just gonna guide him and train him as the best he possibly can. Well, you, he's got two great role models in front of him in, in yourself and, Thank you. and Christine, hasn't he? So, you know, as he's yeah. on that straight and narrow. And if if you like you say, if he's got the role model of the first ever world champion in an organisation. He's not going to do bad, is he? 
yeah, it's amazing. He's gonna. He's hopefully, hopefully, he's better than me. I believe so. And um, yeah, let's get him. Let's get him to where he needs to be. Presumably, you thought he won the the Lewis George fight. Was it last month or the or the month prior? Um, last was it last month? Yeah, I think it might have been last month. Yeah, personally, I, I thought he won, but you know, it's, it's the home show, junior show. You can't. Uh, you can't knock. Not the winner or the draw, you know what I mean? They're, they're young kids, yeah. so we're happy with the draw. It is where it is. Hopefully, we get the rematch. You know. How nervous do you get before a fight with Freddie? Because he is your little brother and he's a little little baby bro. How nervous do you get when he's walking to the to the ring? Do you know what? <laughs> a good question because I get I get fucking nervous. <laughs> I actually do, mate. I get more nervous when he's walking out and I'm there than I do when I'm walking out. It's just. You know, just that's what it is. I suppose well, I believe in him. I think he's uh, he's he's unbelievably talented, and um, every time he goes out, I know he'll do all right and he'll do well. So I've got um, I've got faith in him. How strange is it to two brothers have so much? To, you know, obviously Freddie's career hasn't panned out yet. Yeah, ne- neither is yours. Still very young in your career, yeah. John. But how how crazy is it for you for two brothers to have so much skill in one specific? Sport. Yeah, it's it's uh it's, it's we just gotta thank them, my mum and dad, really, haven't we? <laughs> and not even that, we just gotta thank uh, our parents for keeping us at it. You know, we could have went elsewhere, done those things, but we we kept on the straight and narrow. But yeah, we got um me and my little brother, we got big plans, maybe opening up a gym, like you know, Haggerty Brothers Academy, you know. It's just um let's see what happens. It'll happen one day, that's the that's the natural route, isn't it, of, a, of an ex-martial artist to open up the gym and, and pass down the knowledge to, to, to younger generations. Or we grow up and then we, uh, Freddie gets a bit older and then we fight the Jake Paul brothers, you know, <laughs> pay-per-view. That's the perfect you know. thing. Yeah, I, I, well, there was obviously Paul brothers versus Diaz brothers were talked about, but Paul brothers versus Haggerty brothers could be... That's, that sounds there. better. <laughs> Under tie rules. <laughs> Yeah, tire rules, leg kicks, everything, elbows. I don't even want to think about them two boys from wherever they're from, California. I don't want to yeah, think of yeah. the, the, the state they be in after that, to be honest. Yeah, it'd be fun, it'd be fun. It would be fun. Well, let's t- turn the conversation back to, to your career, if you like. And since the, yep. the Rod Tang fight, you obviously had your comeback fight uh, against N- Naito. But Rod Tang's had two fights Um I can't. Um, the name escapes me of the Russian. Was it U- Ulbanov? Was it memory serves? Yeah, I, I couldn't. Uh, I'm not really too sure. Ulbanov and obviously um, Danny M- Mini T Williams. What what have you made of, of them two performances? I think um, one was kickboxing, right? Yes, yes. I think uh, the kickboxing one was. Uh, people were saying that the other guy looked like he won. Really, I heard um, a split decision or something. Yeah, I, I never thought it was a split, personally. I thought Rod Tan won every round, to be honest, but yeah, it, it, he had success. Yeah, and then with the, uh, the other fight, was that Danny Mini T? Yeah. I think he'd done really well against uh, um, Rod Tang. I thought Rod Tang was going to blow him out of the waters. Like, obviously, no disrespect but what Rod Tang does. But um, I think styles make fights, and where they're the same height, like, it was... Uh, I think, yeah, that was a, that was a really good fight. Yeah, it was. What out of interest, a fellow Englishman was was obviously meant to fight Rod Tang in April, uh, Jacob Smith. Did, did you think? What did you think about that potential matchup? Do you think Smith has anything for him? Uh, yeah, I think it would. Um, it would have been a good fight. You know, for Jacob Smith loves to bring the bring the power, bring the bring the war. But Rod Tang's got a different sort of level of war. I was obviously I was rooting for Jacob Smith, rooting for him. So. Uh, if he won the belt and obviously two Englishmen fight against for the belt, it would have been wicked. But um, yeah, I think they both would have had a tough fight. It would have been like, they would have both woke up with um, sore shins and sore elbows in the morning, sore heads. So yeah, been a good fight. Out of interest, John, have you ever had a, a tight fight and not woken up with sore, sore elbows and sore shins? Because I'd imagine that's virtually impossible. <laughs> you know what? I had a, t- I had a fight on Christian Knowles' show against uh, James O'Connell and... Um, I think it was six seconds. It was a head kick. And then I woke up the next day. I think I just had, just had a swollen foot. But yeah, I've never woke up with no injuries because when I hit, I, like, I do sort of hit to hurt. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And um, 
even if it lands on him, it still does. It hurts myself. But not in a fight. In the fight, you don't feel a thing. Yeah, of course. It's one of them. Just the sh- next day. It's one of them sports where, with the exception of a, an early KO, where virtually every every tie fight is to some extent a war, and you're going to take some damage. Hundred percent. Even like if you're beating the guy to pieces and he's just blocking, and that, like <laughs> your ankles are going to take it. Like. Yeah. And the four ounce gloves, as you mentioned. Yeah, four ounce gloves. Like obviously, I um I tend to not really use wraps when I when I wear them. So obviously, thank thankfully, I've not had an injury on my hands, but. Might have to start wrapping up, though. Yeah, maybe. Well, let's turn the conversation back to, to your career. And I, I like to ask people this question, John, because the, the response is always interesting. We're obviously in July 2021 now. Where would you like to yeah. be come the 1st of July 2022? What, what do you want to accomplish the next 12 months? Uh, I've always said, man, I just want to get my, my, my belt back first. Well, I wouldn't say my belt. I'll say the one championship belt. And then um, my, my plan was to win the one title and then obviously win the, the kickboxing world title. So one on that shoulder, one on that shoulder. But yeah, I do see myself having an MMA debut with, like next year, 100%. Really? Wow. I, I didn't think it I didn't think it'd be that early, to be honest. But the thought of John Agassi in an MMA cage is, is next level exciting. Yeah, that's just that. Uh, just thought, thank you, mate. I just have to work on, obviously, the, the wrestling and all the other sort of aspects with it. Out of interest, have you started anything like that? Any wrestling, any grappling, anything like that? Um, to be fair, I was doing it. I, I, I have been growing up doing it because I've grown up in an MMA gym. And when I was sort of young, I was obviously like doing bits and bobs. But as I grew up, my career got serious. So I had to stick to tie boxing. But um, when I'm not in camp, I do tend to do some classes and that's some MMA classes. And just, just getting the basics, really. Yeah. You know, but... Um, yeah, I've still got load load to work on, but time will tell, and the work will um the work will happen. The work will happen. Well, I think we should leave it there with the tantalising thoughts of John Jonathan Agassi in an in an MMA fight in the next twelve months. Yes, yes, that'll be that's going to be a. Uh, hopefully, that's where we want to be in the UFC. <laughs> you you will get there, mate. Listen, you you probably got a, an advantage over virtually anyone. Your division in in MMA in terms of striking, it's yeah. just, it's it's the Clarissa Shields thing last month, isn't it? It's just about yeah, of course, sort of similar thing. to that, yeah, yeah. Well, I as I say, mate, I very much thank you for your time today, and I just can't wait no to worries, see you back in action. It's, it's it's a pleasure, mate. Thank you for your time too. Before we finish, John, how can people find you and, and any products you're involved with uh, on social media? Um, Instagram J Haggy underscore. You can see all my uh, my knockouts, my training videos, etc. What sort of products I use, and um, yeah, that's it, really, mate. Catch me on a uh, J Haggy underscore Instagram. And I give this opportunity to everyone. The floor is yours. Anything you want to say or sign off with at all? I'm good to go, mate. <laughs> I'm good to go. Short and sweet. Yeah. Short and sweet. Well, as I say, very much thank you for your time, and can't wait to see you thank back you, in action. Bro. Thank you very much, mate.